Welcome to Transformative Principle, where you learn how to be a leader and not just a manager of a to-do list. I am your host, Jethro Jones. You can find me on Twitter at Jethro Jones. Your to-do list is a hungry monster that is never satisfied. For the last year and a half, I've helped principals get awards, get promoted, and find the time to do the work that really matters. I recently opened a new mastermind slot. Schedule a call with me and let's overcome the stressed and isolated principal position together. Go to the show notes for this episode at transformativeprincipal.org and click schedule a call with Jethro. Thank you to our sponsor, Can Do You. Can Do You helps busy principals create the school culture they've always dreamed of through motivational speeches, engaging videos, and leadership camps that are packaged together for schools that want to see real change. Go to candoyou.us slash Jethro to schedule your call today. And if you sign up before the end of the summer, you'll receive a big, huge TV for your lobby to recognize all the amazing things that your students are doing every single day. That's can do you. C-A-N-D-O, the letter U, dot U-S, slash Jethro. Hey there, this is Danny Sunshine Bauer from Better Leaders, Better Schools, and the School Leadership Series, a proud member of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to right now. The opinions expressed are those of the individual hosts. Make sure you check out all the other great podcasts at edu podcastnetwork.com and get ready because the learning begins in three, two, one. Hi there. I am really excited to talk with uh, Jeff Becker today. And I want you to know that uh, he and I came to an agreement to sponsor this uh, podcast, as you've probably heard over the last little while. And just want to let you know that after talking with him a couple months ago, which I do record and then schedule out for a while, um, I was so impressed with his approach and thought that it was so good that that I did want to do a sponsorship with him. So I hope uh, you'll listen to this conversation and then go to the website and make sure that you participate in that. And that will be really awesome. And the website for that is can do you dot us slash jethro so go to can do you dot us slash jethro and you'll be able to learn more about what he does and how he can connect with your students and do amazing things with them thanks so much enjoy this interview welcome to transformative principle this is episode 232 with Jeff Becker. And Jeff, thank you so much for being part of Transformative Principle today. You are the main man at Can Do You. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and and what you're doing now? Yeah, Jethro. Well, before we even get wrong, I just want to say thank you so much for having me on. A friend of mine actually recommended this podcast to me. And I don't know about you, but I'm I'm kind of stuck in my routine with my guys and my podcasts and my books that I always listen to. Like, yeah, I love Entree Leadership with Ken Coleman and Dave Ramsey, Andy Stanley, stuff like that. But I listened to a couple of your conversations and it lit me up. I was like, yes, this guy is the real deal. And not only are your students probably thriving because of how hard you're attacking this leadership thing but probably thousands of other students from all the conversations you're having as well, man. So I just want to say, I love what you're doing. I love your big, crazy goals of trying to meet a million students. And uh, yeah, man, I'm pumped to talk to you today. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited to talk to you also. And if you are listening and what we're talking about today does leave an impact on you, I'd invite you to go to transformativeprincipal.org slash impact and help me get that number up even higher because This is not just about me or Jeff. This is about us working together to help you make an impact in your school. And so I hope you'll take action. I hope that what we talk about today leads you to want to take action and to make life better for the kids that you're around. So now that that's out of the way, Jeff, tell us about you. Yeah. So for probably the better part of the last decade, I was a a motivational speaker. So I would travel around to middle schools and high schools and and eventually, and I think you would agree with this, is that I got to a point where having conversations with administrators and school leaders, I had to agree with them when they were giving me pushback of saying that, you know, like we love motivational speakers, but it's just not super impactful. 
And, you know, as much as I love to do motivational speaking and keynote speeches and assemblies and stuff like that, like I had to agree with it. So, you know, um, being open minded and, and, and trying to adapt with the times and the things that people tell you. And that's kind of where can do you was born. So um, I love what you said. I was actually listening to the, to the last episode with a guy. I think his name was Spike which is yeah. an awesome, awesome name for a principal. Spike Cook. Yep, that's a good Spike one. Spike Cook. Yeah, he's a Jersey guy, right? That's right, yep. Absolutely. So you said something. You said that your to-do list is a big, scary monster. That's and right. And <laughs> I love I was like, yes, exactly. So like everything we do at Can Do You, organizationally speaking, revolves around that exact villain of every principal's story. Like we actually have a saying. It's on all of our business cards. So the first thing we think about is principals, and we say that we help busy school leaders create the school culture they've always dreamed of by providing packages of motivational speeches, engaging videos, and leadership camps for their students. So, like, I know that's a mouthful, but we want principals to know that, like, we totally get what they're going through. Yeah, and, you know, you and I both know that a principal's job, everything is dependent on the principal and the success or failure of a school is exactly related to the principal's leadership. And so it is so important to be able to have that something in place to help you be successful at that. Yeah, absolutely. And the kids are the most important part. And so often they get pushed to the back burner and they need to be at the forefront and doing the kinds of things that you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. So then it, this is how the rest of the story goes. So as I take a step back and, and I realize, like, you know, like our students need more with, with the amount of negative inputs that they're getting across the course of a day, whether that be from their phone or YouTube or Netflix or just not having proper parent supervision, they just need more, more than a motivational speech or more than what's currently out there. So um, we started just kind of pulling apart the the traditional model of character education programs. Like we know that they're not effective as we've been doing them for the past 10, 20, 30 years. I mean, John Hattie is all over this, just that the traditional method hasn't worked. And so we said to ourselves, like, we have to take a fresh approach to this. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And and it's not just that the character education isn't working. I think that that's, that's a pretty critical statement. I yeah. think there's some some truth to that. But my opinion about character education not working is that we try so hard to teach it in isolation right. and by doing like a one-off kind of thing. And I just don't think that that is how, how we make a real impact. You know, like my belief is that every single teacher should be teaching character all throughout their day. And every single teacher should be teaching things like digital citizenship yeah. every time they turn kids loose on computers and, or any kind of devices. And that, that is something that I think is really important with what you're doing through can do you is that it's not just, you know, this, the stop in and do something. It's, you know, the semester seminars in addition to that, can you talk a little bit about those semester seminars that I, I think are just so important. Yeah, absolutely. So that was one of the things that we think about is that we look at programs and their completeness. Some programs are incomplete is just that's like kind of what you were touching upon. And so either you have a motivational speaker come in, which two things happen. The students are almost immediately going to forget about the message or it pumps them up, but they actually it, it, it's like this now what kind of moment where it's an emotional roller coaster and then boom, the motivational speaker leaves. So that's one of the big differences about Can Do You is that the motivational speaker is just the beginning. So um, like you said, we have these things called semester seminars. So essentially what we do is it's a package. So step one, motivational speaker. Step two is we leave a web-based, super fun, super energetic, very relevant video set. It's super easy to implement. It has downloadable worksheets and activities that are like almost zero maintenance for teachers so we just believe that a motivational speaker by itself is awesome, but incomplete. So, yeah, that's the semester seminars. And and what I like about those is that they go through different things besides just the general character education stuff, right. like creating a vision for your life. Man, if if I had a vision when I was 14 or 15, that would have really 
helped me at that time because I was just bouncing around. Can you talk a little bit about why that kind of a thing is so important for you to to be um, pushing towards kids? Yeah, absolutely. So it, it's just like you said, it's um, we ask ourselves a couple questions at Can Do You when we're creating our curriculum is like one is what do we wish we had when we were in middle school and high school? And two, what are the skills and what are the lessons and what are the conversations that students need in order to be successful? So like you said, it's not just traditional character education, when, which, which is phenomenal. You know, kids need to learn about integrity and they need to learn about leadership and all this stuff. But this is uh, more about success. So, yeah, we do. We talk about things like mindfulness, quiet time, how to work within teams, how to be humble, how to listen well. But yeah, like how to create a vision. Like we talk about it like a vision isn't just a vision. A vision is a filter in which you make decisions through. So it's not always just finding a good way to say no to everything, you know, like say no to drugs, say no to alcohol, say no to whatever. It's helping a student not just to say no, but to have something better to say yes to. We think that's so critical. We think that's so important. Yeah. Did I get this right? A vision is a filter you make decisions through? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I think about that for, for kids. I was just talking to some kids today at my school and, you know, right now as we're recording this, there's walkouts that have just been happening and there are more walkouts to be scheduled. And these kids had to decide whether or not they were going to participate in the walkouts or not. And, you know, I asked some kids like, did you do it or did you not? And why did you, why didn't you? And things like that. And really the students did not some students did have a vision and a filter that you make decisions through. And the idea that they might have gotten in trouble or kids were saying that you were going to get suspended if you did the walkout, which wasn't true, but that was, that was where kids immediately went. And some kids were like, well, I don't care if I get suspended. I believe in this so much. I need to do this. And other kids were like, Oh, I kind of want to do it. But then when, when I heard I might get in trouble, then I decided it wasn't worth it. And both of those kids, Jeff, are right because right. they have a vision that it's not worth it or it is worth it or whatever to do that or not do that because of what they believe. And the kids who were like, I don't know, I just did it because my friends were like those kids I'm worried about. Yeah. The kids that are making taking a stand either way, I'm not as worried about those kids. <laughs> right. Exactly. I totally agree with that. When we talk about vision specifically, we always say that, you know, like, imagine you want to be an engineer. Well, then you get off the bus and somebody's like, hey, do you want to go smoke some weed? It's like, you're going to be like, mm, well, that doesn't seem real conducive to my future hopes and dreams. Or like, hey, do you want to go do some stupid vandalism stuff? You know, it's like, if you don't, if you don't have something better to say yes to, you're going to have a heck of a hard time saying no to all of the stuff that's going to come your way. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely powerful. So can you talk a little bit about uh, your history and how you came to learn how important these things are for you? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, I think probably like you is <laughs> you make, you make enough mistakes and you're going to start taking notes and taking inventory of the things that you wish you had and, and the mistakes that you made that you wish you could have avoided. But so this is what I love so much about Can Do You. So uh, we were chatting a little bit earlier, talking about, you know, geeking out on education and leadership and stuff like that. So at Can Do You, we always want to make sure that our curriculum speaks student, like student as in a language of its own. Because as you know, working with students, they have their own language. They speak it with each other. And that's that you got to find that in route. You have to speak students. So uh, like you and I love leadership. We listen to stuff. We listen to podcasts. We read books. We get pumped about it, whether it's like John Maxwell, Strengths Finder, John Acuff, Michael Hyatt, whoever, right? Yes. all I'm fans of all those. I'm a fan of all those guys. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So it, it's good stuff, right? And like our students, our students need that, but we can't feed that to students the way that that is fed to us. So like we firmly believe that we can take that best leadership stuff that you and I love so much, chew it up and give it to the students in their own native colloquial crazy kind of way. And we've been hearing great things from schools and organizations that we have partnered with. Like the students are lighting up because we're speaking their language. Yeah, that is so important that for a lot of adults, that's difficult because we're not in we're not even if we work in a school, we're not 
at the same level as kids. How do you speak their language right. as an adult? You know, I think it's I, I swear I'm trying to say this in the most humble manner possible, but I think myself and my team, I surround myself. I always try to surround myself with smarter people than myself, first of all. Yeah. Second, I feel like I just I feel like that's one of my strengths is that I'm kind of an intermediary between adults and students. Like I've always had that. And I think that's what drives me to do what I do is that like I get students and students get me and I can I can kind of be that go between. Um, one of my mentors, Matt Keller, he he did a whole a whole talk on that is that something powerful is going to happen when we can bridge the gap between generations. You know what I mean? Like we have the baby boomers and the millennials and generation Z, when we can bridge that gap and start sharing and uh, interchanging ideas and having a, a two way kind of dialogue, that's when something really powerful is going to happen. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And I've seen that so powerfully in, in my own life when I've been able to connect with with a group of students or with adults that are older than me in a different generation, when we've been able to connect, it's been incredibly powerful. And, you know, one of the things that I really try to do on, on this podcast is, is help people see themselves in the position of the people that I'm interviewing. And so I want to ask how you figured out that your strength was to be an intermediary between adults and kids. How did you learn that? And how would you suggest other people go about learning what their individual strengths are because they're not going to have the same strength as you and that's okay, but we need to be working in our strengths. And that's obviously what you've done and what you've have been very successful at. So how did you figure it out and how do you encourage others to figure out their own strengths? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it was a lot of really great mentorship. And I think, I mean, I think everybody experiences a certain amount of luck in their life. You know, like I ran into some, the right people at the right time and got pushed in the right direction at the right time. But there was some intentional stuff that I did do, whether that was like, I, once I started finding out who I was, you know, not just like who the world told me I was, once I started finding out who I was, then I really wanted to start digging into it. So like the resources that I really geeked out on were like Strengths Finder by Gallup. That was super exciting. Oh yeah. When you get those results back and and you're looking at them and you're like, oh my gosh, they're right. You know, it like it's like, it excites you even more to find out even more about how to put yourself in those situations where you feel strong. So Strengths Finder was huge for me. It nailed me on the head and I was like, I was so excited to then position myself in situations where not only would I be impactful, but I felt strong doing what I was doing. You know, another great one is Myers Briggs. I don't know if you subscribe to that. There's a million personality assessments and stuff like that, but finding out more about my personality type, which is ENFP, which means I go kind of running off at any kind of shiny light and big idea and stuff like that. And so not only does it tell you your strengths, but it also teaches you what your possible weaknesses are. So you can then look out for them as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I also love the the strengths finder assessment and I've done Myers Briggs and I think that I am ENFP or ENFTP. I think I'm somewhere in there. I don't yeah. remember. Yep. Yep. But the other one that I really like uh, is the disc profile. Have you done that one? I, you know, I took a, like a preliminary version of it, but I do, I hear that that's really great. I, I haven't taken the whole thing or dug into that. Yeah. So for, uh, there's a great guy out there named Tony Robbins. I don't know if anybody's heard of him before, no, but no, not at all. Yeah, if you go to his website, Tony Robbins.com slash disc, uh, you can take it for free on there and he'll send you a bunch of other great beneficial stuff that is really good, but I've taken that one and I really like that one because for me as a principal specifically, what that gives is a page way down in there that says how to communicate effectively with Jethro and things yeah. to avoid to communicate effectively with Jethro. And so people, I hang that on my door at work so that when teachers or students are coming in, they can take a moment, review that and make sure that they're ready to have a conversation with me so that they can communicate effectively. And I've, I've just seen so much success with knowing that myself so that when I start to get frustrated or annoyed in a conversation with someone, I can say, oh, this is probably because they're doing this thing here. And then I can adjust my 
style to better meet their needs, which is not as easy as it sounds, but is very vital to having an effective communication system in your school. So, so that that's one little plug there that yeah, knowing yourself is just so powerful. Yeah, and also it it what I found is that anybody, well, <laughs> obviously probably one hundred percent of the listeners right now is that when you're in a leadership position, it also helps you to surround yourself with a really strong team. People that are going to be picking up where each other leave off. For instance, a girl that I used to supervise, I'm an ENFP, which in short means that I draw big conclusions and I tend to make some big blanket statements. And sometimes I can be a little bit messy or unorganized, but the young lady that I supervise, she was what's called an ENFJ, which means that she's a little bit more organized. There's a whole lot more to it, but that's one of her strengths was to be organized. So, I mean, and for hiring purposes, you could probably get into a ton of that kind of stuff for hiring purposes. If you're looking for certain types of people to fill, whether it's administrative roles or even teachers, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That's actually something that I did with my assistant principal and my librarian that I hired this last school year. They both are high on the details and that is an area where I am weak. And I had them take the disc beforehand and have talked to them numerous times about how important that is to me that they see them, their strength as an area where I'm weak so that they can support me in that. And when they get bogged down in the details, I can pull them out and show them what the big vision is and get them fired up about going in that direction. And like when you plan like that and you are intentional, oh my goodness, it just, it changes your life because you're able to do things that you just never thought were even possible before. It's awesome. Right. Yeah. So Jeff, what other questions should I be asking you right now that I haven't yet? Uh, a great question about questions. So um, if, there was an, if there was anything that I'd love um, also to say, right? So going back to Can Do You. So we were talking about the completeness of Can Do You. So one of the cool things that I would love to explain that we do, and this is my favorite part by far. At the end of the year, after a school has signed on for a year and done the orientation assembly and done the semester seminars through the year, At the end of the year, what we do is we come back to the school and we do what's called an alumni offsite. This is super cool. You want to talk about really putting tools in the hands of students and watching them change their their surroundings. That's what we do. So what we do is at the alumni offsite, we teach student leaders how to be agents of change by showing them how to create a data driven strategic plan. Like we actually take real school data disaggregate it, chop it up, break it down, make inferences from it, and then set strategic goals. So whether that's like your student government team or your key club team or your National Honor Society team, we take like your 20 or 30 highest level student leaders and we set them up for big time change. Because as you know, I mean, your time is very slim as an administrator. Assistant principals are usually running around just as fast. Teachers are bogged down with tons of planning and state standardized testing stuff. The One of the biggest keys to this program is that after you fill these students up with success education, you give them tools then to be kind of peripherals to whatever it is that you're trying to do in your strategic plan. Their strategic plan, nine times out of 10, is going to align with yours. And that's when you're going to see big exponential change. When you actually put the tools in the students' hands and watch them go at it, it's It's so, so cool. Yeah, I bet that is. So what does that look like when they're actually working in that environment, in that retreat? Yeah, absolutely. So it could be anywhere. uh, A lot of times we like to go outdoors. I don't know if you ever read the book Brain Rules, but we like to move. We like to move around and stay mobile. I feel like there's another leadership state principle that's change of place, change of pace, change of perspective. So we like to get outside of the walls as much as possible. But I mean, we've done it everywhere from outdoors to to I did one at a bowling alley, one we did in a conference room at the district building. But what we do is beforehand, I'll, I'll meet with the principal for about 30 minutes. I'll get some data from the info specialist or whoever it is at your school that can just crank out some data and whatever key results areas that you want looked at, whether that's attendance or discipline or graduation rates or high levels in state standardized testing, whatever it is, we get that data. 
And then we break students down into smaller teams in that 30. And we challenge them to figure out the data and to find the gaps. Then we talk about the gaps. We create data-driven SMART goals. And then we create interventions that are going to attack those SMART goals. And the students are then challenged and then led by the adult leader to actually really work on it and meet back and record the data and audit the systems and procedures that are helping to create that big time change. That's awesome. I, I love that idea. And if you want more of, of that, that Jeff is talking about of empowering students and other people in your buildings to actually get in, engaged and enrolled in the vision, check out transformative leadership summit. Dot com. Our whole theme this year is empowerment. And so you're going to you're going to love uh, going deeper on that at that. So transformative leadership summit dot com and, and sign up to be part of that summit this summer. It's awesome. So, Jeff, the final question that I ask every person that I interview is what is one thing that a principal can do this week to be a transformative leader like you? Yeah, I think and I know I, I might get a karate chop for this by a principal somewhere that hears me saying this, but walk slowly. A mentor of mine once told me that, that when you're feeling wound up or you're feeling anxiety or you're feeling rushed, you actually need to slow down. It does a couple of things. One is it helps you to kind of chill out and get some perspective. EMTs or like emergency medical technicians, they, what you notice is even if they're going to a horrible car crash, they never, ever run. And so you'll see them walking in buildings. They probably, when the EMS comes to your school for an injury, they walk into the building. And you might be thinking to yourself, yep. why, why aren't they hustling, you know? Well, it's, it's they're trained to walk. Physiologically, it helps you to think better. But also, walking slow, it shows people that you care about them, you know? If I could challenge a principal to do one thing, that would be to, to walk slowly, ask a student how they are, and really, really mean it. You know, there's just so many things over the course of the day. And I always have to remind myself that education is the vehicle. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it sure does. And I'm quiet because I'm, I'm pondering on that and thinking about it because that is something that I, that has been a big part of my leadership for a long time. I went real quick, not to take away from what you just said, but just to add to it. I went to an elementary school and the, they had a behavior unit there and it was like the expectation was when you're the assistant principal, which I was, then you need to run and go be at that place. And if a kid is taken off, you need to go chase that kid and run after them. And I got there and I learned that that was the culture. And I was like, no, I am never going to run after a kid to chase them. I will follow at a safe distance, make sure that they're safe. But I'm just not going to I'm not going to run after him. That's just not how I'm going to define my leadership. And that has been the case. And I I always walk slower than every teacher I'm walking with. I always walk slower than every kid I'm walking with. I was like, hey, slow down, hang back and talk to me for a little bit. <laughs> I love and it. it's validating to hear you say that without us talking about that beforehand. It's it's validating to hear that because I totally agree. There's such power in slowing down. And so many principals feel so rushed and they measure their effectiveness and how fast they walk and things like that. And, and it's, it's wise to take some time, slow down, like you said. So thank you very much for that, Jeff. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So how can we uh, connect with you, learn more from you and about you? Absolutely. So um, there's two major ways. One is check out the website. The website is can do you.us. So I'm going to spell that for you. It's C A N D O then the letter U as in university. So it's can do you dot us. And so you can check out everything. Everything's it's pretty straightforward. Reach out to me through there. Or also I do educational or leadership trainings. I do Patrick Lencioni's five dysfunctions of a team. I do offsites with school districts and stuff like that. So um, you can check that out on jeffbecker.org. So if, if you want me to come out and, you know, talk to your leadership team and walk you through them, I'm a, I'm a trained facilitator for Lincioni's uh, table group. So I also do that. Very cool. Well, Jeff, thank you so much. This has been awesome. And you can find links to uh, everything that we talked about at transformativeprincipal.org slash episode 232, including the link to that in case you forgot it. Also links to the 16 personalities, Myers-Briggs, 
Tony Robbins discs. No, it's not Tony Robbins discs, but I'm using his link and then everything else. So thank you so much again, Jeff. This has been awesome talking to you. Jethro, I'm so pumped about our conversation, man. I hope our paths cross again. 